Hi guys, Joe here. Welcome to 750 Gaming. In this one we'll talk about index cards, point costs, and why I think Games Workshop may have played a blinder for list building. Okay, so hopefully we've seen all the index cards and the Munitorum field manual by now, with all the points costs and things, and I've been looking them all over for the last couple of weeks to work out what my old 9th edition armies may look like in this new version of the game. And I'll do another video on those in a bit, but for now, let's just say I'm pretty happy. I'm really pleased with how Games Workshop have released all of this information. I think they've done the community here a real solid. Free rules? Check. Free data and points costs? Check. Released and published quickly and in advance of the launch box landing so that those of us who didn't go in for it and all its paperwork can actually play the new edition of the game with the new rules and data and points without having to wait and rue our non buy inness. Check. Yeah. Good job, Games Workshop. And thank you. But here's where I think they've actually done a really clever thing for the longevity of the game, or at least this edition and people's armies. Of course, it will remain to be seen, but I think we've already seen a little bit of how they are going to approach erratas and FAQs and general game balance from now on in how they treated that Death Watch cheat code. And it wasn't to do with points changes. Because I don't think points necessarily need to change here. Ever. Possibly. Maybe. Let me explain. Historically, we've all built our army lists to a points limit. A thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, or, you know, in my case, 750 points. Woo, go me! But if you're like me, you've maybe done a bit of points bloating with war gear or upgrades here, or chucked an extra model into a unit to make up to that points limit there. Great stuff. And then, you know, Games Workshop have rebalanced the game, as they all want to do, and change the points of a unit, and... Either you've got to find another upgrade here, or you've got to cut a model, or some war gear to get you back down to the points limit you are now over. And it can be a real pain in the proverbial, but the flex was possible. Look at my white scars for instance. I had a 5 man assault intercessor squad that used to be worth a base 110 points. Then, after various balanced data slates and things, I found I had enough points in the bag across the whole army to actually make it a six-man assault intercessor squad and give the sergeant a thunder hammer to boot. And then that took that squad up to 139 points. But now that all the war gear is free and the units are kind of fixed in number, they've completely taken out the flexibility to make up points or cut what you need. Which means my squad becomes a five-man squad once again, still with a hammer, but now for a base 90 points or if I chose to, I could keep it as a six-man squad, but for uh, 180 points? Okay, so it's not the end of the world for me in my smaller scale, super flexible way of doing this thing, but say you've now made yourself a 2,000-point army, and the points change significantly on some of your units, well, you may be in a place where you have to add or cut an entire unit which obviously isn't terrific news. But I think Games Workshop have given themselves a really great way out of this, and this is why I think they've played a blinder. Now, if a unit requires a buff or a nerf, they don't need to play with the points and do some crazy maths to work out what's what. They can instead just revisit the index card for that unit and change a stat here or there. Your army composition remains the same, your beautifully painted units can stay as they are. You don't need to do anything other than be aware that that model's gun now doesn't have that keyword anymore, or now only does one damage. Or that model is perhaps a little bit tougher than it used to be. Or that model no longer has access to that stratagem. Or in the case of the Death Watch, as we've already seen, that stratagem is no longer as overpowered. Now does this make a mess of your index cards? Well. Yeah, sure, and it's going to be a pain if you bought them from Games Workshop to have those nicely printed copies in front of you, but that's always going to be the same with printed literature. 
it's a point in time publication it's never going to be a living document but then again you don't really go complaining to the custodians of the English language that your dictionary you had in secondary school 20 years ago doesn't contain the popular vocabulary of today or that that guidebook you bought for that city break five years ago doesn't have info on a new museum they only opened last month that's just life people will still buy the books because books are nice and the people who buy books because they are nice are less likely to be bothered that they go out of date and it won't ever feel like a waste of money to them but for those for whom this is a real annoyance and does feel like a waste of money well i think games workshop have realized that digital publications that's to say living documents are the go-to from now on and I'm sure if they decide they need to prop up the shareholders a bit more that they'll charge some sort of ongoing subscription fee for the updates. But again, as it's a subscription for a living and evolving product as opposed to a point in time purchase for a point in time asset, there should be no complaints about it. Other than, you know, prospective pricing. Hey ho! But you know, it's the internet. Someone will publish the data somewhere and we'll all be editing our PDFs or scribbling on the cards we've printed out in earnest, and it'll be what it'll be. I could be completely, completely wrong. The points could still change, and people could find they suddenly need to spend more money at the Games Workshop Shrine and purchase new miniatures and keep the capitalist world ticking over. But we can dream, right? I'm looking forward to a slightly more sustainable edition of 40k anyway. Time will tell. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and we can all look back in three years' time and review our madness and see who accurately predicted the Games Workshop business model for 10th edition. Otherwise, I'll hopefully see you next time. Thanks for watching. Let's go. As always, I just do this for fun and make these videos when I can. I don't have a regular release schedule, they just happen when they happen. So if you want to make sure you don't miss a beat over the next few months and going forward then hit subscribe so you can catch these when they come. If you enjoyed this or any of my other videos then do hit that like button as it really helps boost my ego and do come check me out on Instagram for all my hobbying updates. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.